what is up my hip urban youth. So what do we have here today? We have the CMP 308 M1 Grand Expert model. Paid $1,250. Now, first off though, let's talk about this gun. So I paid $1,250 for it. For, you know, a lot of money nowadays. Let's start off with the most important things first. Issues, issues, issues. So what are the issues with the gun? Well, I didn't have any failure to feed problems. I didn't have any failure to fire problems. I didn't have any failure to extract problems. I didn't have any failure. Uh, well, I didn't have any failures in general. But I had one little gripe. It's kind of cosmetic, but also mechanical. The gun, your picture's on screen, shoots like kind of <laughs> ridiculously left. Um, here's a picture of my current zero, 200 yards. That's it. The front sight, okay. POV, you're an Asian between the years, you know, let's rewind that. POV, you're an Oriental between the years 1941 and 1972, right? So, look at that front sight. Mechanically, that blade, the front sight is adjusted all the way to the left. My rear sight is adjusted all the way to the right. This gun will literally, the windage is almost completely taken up. You guys will see the pictures on the screen, of course. So... You know, that's kind of a big issue with me. I'm kind of autistic about things like that, especially on old rifles like this where, I mean, let me explain something to you guys too. A lot of you are going to say, well, we'll just send it back in. Well, that's the funny thing. I sent it back in. I actually, I sent it back to the armorers because they thought it was odd and they said they fixed it. And it turns out they did. They said they uh, retuned the barrel or whatever it's called, uh, timed it, or I, I don't know the term. There's a term for it with M1 Garands. And they said, you know, it should, you know, we fired rounds through it, it worked. You know, um, like how much does a fucking bore laser cost? You fired $40 worth of ammo and you could have just put a fucking bore laser through it. So gun shoots stupidly far left. Um, thankfully, there's enough of mechanical windage on the front blade for me to shift it left. There's enough mechanical windage on the right. Um, for me to shift it right to actually have the gun hit targets at 200 yards. So that's awesome. Now, you all know the M1 Grandis history, you know, blah, 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 George Patton, blah, 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 greatest implement, blah, 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 ping sound, blah, blah, blah. Uh, enemies hear it when it hits the ground. Okay, we all know that shit ain't true. We all know, blah, 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 greatest battle rifle, blah, 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 ever. Okay, we all know it. Okay, you've all seen the fucking videos, blah, 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 blah. This rifle, what comes with it? Well, it comes with a case, obviously. Here's the picture of the case on the screen. Um, guns reparkerized, new stock, new barrel, Criterion barrel, it's a match grade barrel. So if I actually put some decent ammo through it, I could probably get some possible sub MOA accuracy. I'm not saying I'm ever gonna do that because I'm not a big, uh, I think accuracy, I think it's overrated. I think marksmanship's probably better way to shoot you may say what's the difference well accuracy is your group that's the accuracy your marksmanship is the ability to hit a target i'm more of the ability to hit a target kind of guy i don't need little small teeny tiny groups you know i'm just not a match grade guy you know i'm more of a eyeball kind of guy 800 yards i mean i could hit a guy with 800 yards with this okay 308 762 by 51 nato what do you want to call it you know, I can kind of just eyeball it, you know, just, I know what 800 yards looks like, you know, you aim about, I don't know, 60, and it's going to be about 70 inches high, 80 inches high at 800 yards. I mean, you can kind of eyeball that, you know, that's like, uh, that's like a person, that's like six feet, right? That's not bad, I think, I don't know the math on that. I'm going to bleep it out, so, you know, if, if that number was incorrect, you guys never got to hear it. Um... You know, should you buy it? Well, remember guys, there's a limited quantity of M1 Grands. These aren't being made anymore. So, you know, I ordered it through the CMP. Um, took about 15 days from the time I sent all my paperwork in to the time of it arriving at my door. So, that's awesome. Um, you know, classic thing for you. I know a lot of you smooth brain monkeys are going to want to hear it. So, here we go. You know, I mean, it is, it's the ping, guys. It's the famous sound. We all know it. We all love it. You know, maybe I'll stick my PP in there and grand PP it, you know. Um, shootability. Well, it's 308. 
so it's not that bad i mean you know if, unless you're how heavy is the gun i think it's like 12 pounds i didn't do the math here's the number on screen for the actual weight i'll uh, i'll google and put it up but it's not very heavy you know if you're a bitch um then it'll be heavy honestly if you if you can't curl more than 40 pounds um like literally physically curl 40 pounds this gun's probably going to be heavy for you okay um if your bench is the average median of the average American male, which is 135 pounds, it's probably going to be heavy for you. Uh, kind of is what it is. I'm not hating on you, but, you know, and to all you battle rifle chads out there, there's a reason we don't use battle rifles anymore, okay, guys? So that's all I'm going to say on that. I'll make a video on that in the future. My take on battle, battle rifles, um, 308, large caliber bore guns. There's a reason we don't use them anymore, okay? Anyway, we're going to shoot this gun a bit, guys. I just want to get this video out for you. I want, you know, we'll talk about it a bit more. You guys will see the videos. Um, you know, POV. I have a stack of fucks fuck like you, like six feet high, three high, high using the cocksucking. Oh, I can't say all the slurs I want to say, but you POV, you're a uh, something eyed bastard who I'm going to stack six feet fucking high. I'm going to use your body as a fucking sandbag, you fucking. General So chicken eating motherfucker. You know, POV, I'm on Guadalcanal and you're a fucking starving. I'm about to I'm about to fry your fucking rice. I'm about to fucking spill that rice brain of yours everywhere. Okay. POV, I'm about to blow your fucking rice patty lung out of your fucking chest. Okay, I'm getting a little hardcore here, aren't I? I can't help it, you know. It's just funny to me. POV, POV, P O V. You're an oriental gangster of undescript ethnicity outside my lawn, threatening the cute, cute Asian GF of mine, and I'm threatening you with my gun. Okay, now get the fuck off my lawn before I fucking blow your fucking zipper fucking gun. Fucking bastard. Okay. POV. Uh, so let's do some shooting, guys. Let's give you some POV. Let's 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 be the American hero soldier who is blowing away um, Orientals between the year 1941 and 1972. Okay, you all know the history. We're just gonna shoot the gun though, because that's what I'm about. You know, I'm about the gun. I'm about being based. I'm about being red pilled. I'm about being fucking. I mean. I, I, We'll talk about the gun more after we're done shooting. 90 fucking degrees out. I'm wearing this face mask. It's harder than hell. But, you know, I'm doing it for you guys, okay? So, hopefully you guys can see it. GoPro app still doesn't work because it's a piece of dog shit. So, we're going to start, okay? Here's the goal. We got to take out the bunker. We got to take out the Japanese. You know, whatever. Here we go. Oh, hit the dirt. You know, Japanese are shooting ass, all right? And I, you know, I'm wearing shorts right now. You guys will see shortly. So I'm not gonna go hitting the dirt like crazy. I mean, gravel, super painful. One more time, one more time. Oh, I guess we can't. Ugh. Too hot. God damn it, come out of the mandolier. Ugh.
we're gonna keep going. Ah, go you bitch. Oh, we hit the ground. More Japanese are shooting ass. We gotta hit the dirt. No, that smells like shit. I think an animal shit here earlier. Oh, die, you Jap. Die, you. S I can't. Oh, feels good. Feels good. Oh. Oh. It's so hot. It's like 97 degrees out. My face is melting. Look at our target here. Oh, we went through. <laughs> Look at that. Three hits. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, we went through. We didn't hit this one that many times, but. It... Uh, we only went through. Well, we hit the side. I don't know. All right, you guys, we're gonna try again. Round two. All right, guys. Round two, we're going Chosen Reservoir on this shit, okay? We got to fall back. We got to fall back. Okay? I got to catch my breath, though. This shit's hot as hell. Okay, we got to fall back. First, things first. Chosen Reservoir. That's what I call it, the Chosen Reservoir. Okay? We got to take out our target in front of us. Okay, that Ipsic. One, two, three. Bing! Oh, it was almost name one. Great! Oh, Norks! Oh, goddamn fucking! What do they call them? Uh, I don't know. One more for good measure. Fucking pass right through that rice paddy. Oh, I gotta blur up my house. That's great. Running low. Go, you bitch. There we go. Oh, that's not good. Okay, no rocks. We're fine. Oh. We got one more. We're almost out of the chosen, boys. We're almost out of the reservoir. These gook bastards. We're almost out. We got eight rounds left. We gotta make them count. We gotta make them count. Oh, 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 oh. Hard gravel. The ground's so dry here. It's like fucking cement. Oh. 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 I can't. I gotta get a breather. Oh. The wood's smoking. <laughs> it's the oil under the uh, under the op rod. I don't know if you guys can see that. <sighs> uh, we can only see the one target. Well, <sighs> I 
Oh, that was some shooting, guys. Was it good? I don't know. Perhaps, perhaps not. Oh. All right, let's talk about it. Oh, look at this gun. Physical beast. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that shooting there. It's so hot. I know I look goofy in my fucking anthrax t-shirt and my uh, boots and my shorts, but guys, it's it's hot. Okay, I'm not going to be running and gunning in goddamn jeans. This ain't fall yet. But, so I want to talk about the battle rifle and its concept real quick. So a lot of people still run battle rifles today for some reason. I don't understand why. Um, it's just, it's outdated. The M1 Garand, now if you've ever watched the Nut Fancy video where he talks about it, right, his POF, his point of philosophy or point of use, right, he still says this is a, a, a quote, you could use this on the modern battlefield. You know, you could, but should you? Hell no. Hell no. I mean, it's better than a bolt action, I'll give you that. But these guns, you're either single, fo single shot feeding them or you have to use these end block clips. And guess what? These aren't lying around everywhere. Okay, you're not going to go to somebody's house and you're not going to find these just laying around. Okay, these aren't AR-15 magazines or AK-47 magazines and even AK-47 magazines. They're still more rare than an AR-15 mag. And you may say, well, you know, but there's still a lot of them. It's true, there is. But, right, the AR-15 is the quintessential, quote, end quote, battle rifle. Okay, not... That it's in a 7.62 by 51 or 308 or some large bore caliber rifle like 8 millimeter Mauser or something like that. Okay. But this gun can lay down some real hate real quick, real fast. Problem is, it's eight shots. I have an AR 10 inside, it holds 25 rounds of 308. Would I take this over the AR 10? Fuck no. I can suppress my AR 10. My AR 10's ready to be suppressed. I have a mount for it already on there, muzzle brake. Time my suppressor, boom, bada bang, this. This can't be suppressed because it'll fucking destroy it. So, you know, the M1 Grand's a great rifle. It was a great rifle for its time. It was a great rifle slightly after its time. And to the end of its time, it was still a great rifle. You know, now this thing's relegated to, you know, essentially, if I could, if there were hogs where I'd live, i use this thing for hog hunting. Um, I'd use this thing for deer hunting. Um, you know, pest removal, like large woodchucks or something. That'd be awesome to use this bad boy right here. But would I take this thing into battle? Hell no. You'd be a fool to take this thing into battle. Unless you're like, it's the, the second American Civil War, you're a conscript and you were just given a gun from some old arsenal and this is what you got. I mean, praise the Lord, you didn't get a Springfield, okay? In 1903 or something, in 30 out six, okay? You know, it, what is it like to shoot the M1 Garand? So if you've ever shot an M14, um, I mean, it's literally like an M14, it feels the exact same. I was quite blown away, I got the, I got the chance probably a summer ago to shoot my buddy's M14. And you know, I just remember the feeling and I shot this and I got the feeling and it feels exactly like an M14. If you've shot an M14, it's the same as an M1 Grand. It's really no different. You know guys, it's really no different um, at all. Is it easy to reload? Yeah, actually, it's very easy to reload. Once you get the hang of it, um, pretty simple grant thumbs are fucking the only way you get grant thumb is if you're a dummy if you don't know how to use your rifle that's how you get grant thumb okay um but yeah i mean for 1250 dollars you know i might buy another one of these quite frankly i might sell one of my ars buy another one of these just have it as a showcase piece or something a lot of people might say this is the tanker model no this is the full rebarreled 308 one it, you know and I might censor this, I might not, I don't know, but I have to say this. I'm, I'm compelled to say this. A lot of you are going to be very mad at me. You're, you know, you're going to be upset. There's going to be a lot of, you know, some would even call it racist. But this rifle has, I mean, a spirit to it. This rifle has a spirit, a story, a spirit, though. This rifle has the spirit of... Man, should I even say it? I mean, you guys are going to be mad. I won't even lie to you, you're gonna be mad. I mean, this is the truth, you're gonna be mad. This rifle has, I mean, this rifle has the spirit, the Aryan spirit. This, I know that's racist, I get it. But you guys just, if you've ever shot one of these, I mean, this thing has the spirit of the white man in it. I mean, I have never been so compelled by a rifle before. I mean, this thing's beautiful. This thing has 
the Hyperborean spirit. This thing has Agatharia written all. If you, most of you aren't even gonna understand these, okay? And let me make this clear. I'm like a full blown 1776 kind of patriot here, okay? Like I want America. Everyone be free. Everyone be happy. Like I want like classical. Like if George, if, if I was George Washington, nothing would have changed in 1776, okay? Like that's the kind of American I am. But I have to say this: this thing has the Venusian, Agatharian, Hyperborean. Aryan spirit behind it. I know that's super racist and a lot of you are gonna be super mad at me for saying that But it's the truth. I mean this thing has such an such a compelable spirit behind it It's like shocking and you know don't, don't forget guys this thing was part of a racial basically a racial conflict for 30 years I mean between 1941 and 1972 from the Pacific Well, I guess it stayed in the Pacific the entire time but from World War two in the Pacific to Korea to Vietnam, this rifle was there, okay? This rifle literally was putting down, you know, this thing was cooking rice for 30 years, okay? So, you know, don't forget, but this gun, this gun, it's a masterpiece. And if you ever have the opportunity to buy one, buy it. This gun is a piece of art. It's a shame nobody will make reproductions. I get it, it's expensive. The guys, this receiver is a fucking hunk of metal. This is literally, the, from here to here, this is a hunk of steel, a hunk of carbon steel, okay? This has to be milled, the magwell, think about this. This entire, this, this is like, I don't know, three, four inches, three, four inches of what is essentially a block of steel, probably eight inches long, four or five inches, three, four, five inches high. This has to be milled, like this is expensive. This gun was expensive to make, but God damn, is it a fucking masterpiece. It was worth every fucking penny. I love this gun. Um, will I ever sell it? Hell no. My kids will probably get this rifle. Should I ever have any? Should I ever find a woman worthy of my seed? Okay. So, you know, guys, I appreciate y'all for watching. Um, you know, maybe we'll do some more stuff with the M1 Grand in a later time. I had some grenades in the mail, not like like fake ones. They were some of those fake German grenades. We were going to do a bit of LARP with that, but... The post office didn't get them to me on time. And I didn't have a lot of time here before I have to go back to work. So I'm going to get this video guys out for you. I'm going to start recording another video right after this. Uh, yeah. Thank you all for watching. Please subscribe. Okay, guys. Um, you know, let's get to 1,000 before the year's up because I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm going to try hard to get these videos out though. Four videos. I'm aiming for four videos this month for you, all you loyal individuals out there. Okay. Here's one last ping for the, uh, for the end. Ready? Three, two, one. Oh, I just gooned all over my shirt, bro. I was just gooning. I was gooning. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. One, two, three, four. I like shooting my M1 Garand. Let's do it some more.